Okay, let's take a little bit to talk about heat colors. What are they? Where do they come from? How can we color our metal using nothing but heat? Now, you're gonna need a few items here, and the first one is going to be a torch. It can be a propane or a butane torch. You'll need something made out of metal. I highly suggest keeping a fire extinguisher handy because we are working with heat. And, of course, a pair of safety glasses. And we're gonna first talk about how I've used heat coloring and then how to do it. Now, heat coloring is using metal and heat, or here we're using a flame source like this torch to color our metal. And what it is is a healthy layer of oxidation. And as the metal gets warmer, the colors on it change. It'll change from basically the gunmetal gray color of the metal, first turning straw, which you'll see here in a bit, first turning straw, and then it's going to get hints of purple. It's going to get gradually get more and more purple until we get hints of blue. And finally, one of the highest temperatures will give you this coal blue gray color. Now, I've done this in the past on my jaw harps. I don't do it on my jaw harps anymore because if you do this on your harps, what's going to happen is the stress of the bends, any internal stress that's in the bends, it's going to cause it to release. So you're gonna have to readjust parts of the instrument after you get on heat coloring if you really want to. But if you heat color it, make sure to keep your heat on the outside because your, your tongue of your instrument is always going to heat up quicker because there's less mass there. So it's going to get the warmest quickest. And it's evidenced by, if you look at the colors on the tongue, it is the darkest. So that's the part that got the warmest. Now, what we're gonna do here is you're gonna have to have a heat source of some type. Torch, I recommend if you're using fire, if you're using a torch, um, do so in a non-flammable environment. If you're out in your garage, make sure that there's no gasoline present, there's no flammable stuff. Make sure there's not lots of wood dust or sawdust around that can ignite cobwebs, paper towels, any of the sort, grain dust, all of your flammable stuff you're gonna to wanna to stay away from. And then as a precaution, make sure that you have a fire extinguisher, even a cheap fire extinguisher or some way to extinguish flame if you need. The next one is you're going to need your building or wherever you're doing this to be ventilated. Don't do it in your house. If it's in your garage, open up a couple windows, open up your door, because anytime we have combustion, we can be generating carbon monoxide. So make sure you have good ventilation and also a good practice, safety glasses. Uh, be sure to protect them peepers. Next, we're gonna need what we're gonna be doing here today. And this, these are hand forged bottle openers from thehardbrew.com. I'm going to put a link up above um, here. There should be a little pop-up right there. Um, and then in the description below, there should be a link to these. But any iron or steel uh, object should work. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to clean these up. These are forged, so there's byproducts of forging. There might even be a little bit of rust on here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna clean them up. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I want to get this bare metal because what we're doing with heat coloring is we're cleaning it up to bare metal. We're getting rid of any rust, we're getting rid of any corrosion, <coughs> um, any oil, any dirt that's on there. <coughs> we wanna get that either sanded or wire wheeled off there so that we have bare metal. And then we're going to heat it up until a healthy level of oxidation. Now this is a oxidation, but unlike rust, which is detrimental to metal, this is a healthy level, a protective, semi-protective layer of oxidation. So what we wanna do first is we wanna get this to, um, to bare metal. Now you can do that with sandpaper if you'd like, or a wire brush if you've got the time. Or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to my bench grinder with my wire wheel. I have a bench grinder that is adjustable. So let's just head on over there. And in this instance, make sure to wear your safety glass if you're working with wire wheels. Safety glasses are key. You don't wanna get a wire in your eye, trust me. Okay, now what we have here is a bench grinder and I've just got a simple wire wheel. We got stone on one side, wire wheel. We're just gonna be using the wire wheel. Now it's nice if you have these little guards that keep the wires from coming up and getting in your eyes, but also be sure to have the safety glasses. The bench grinders I prefer are the ones with variable speed that you can speed up and slow down. Good deal to have. Anyways, we're gonna take this. This is the hand forge bottle opener from Rajasthan, and we're gonna clean it up a bit. So we're gonna take it on the wire wheel. We're gonna turn it on. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. 
And on this, I can keep it on high or I can turn it down. But here I'm gonna keep it on a higher setting and I'm just gonna take it and we're gonna do is some cleaning up. See how that's cleaning that up. We wanna get all rust, all evidence of foraging, everything. We want bare metal. Now when you're doing this, be careful. See there, we're getting it nice and shiny. Make sure that you don't do this at an angle where this gets sucked in. Because if you have an instrument, especially a harp, you don't want it to get sucked into the sucked into the grinder. safe when working with grinders. Grind a little bit, compare it to the light, see how your progress is. And this is the evidence of the forging here. We're going to take that off as well. We're going to get that as shiny as we can. I think that is about as shiny bare metal as we're gonna get now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to wipe this off, get it free of all this metal dust. You can see from my fingers, my fingers are very dirty just from the metal dust that came off here. So let's come over, we're gonna do a little bit of sanding. And just cause we're in the mood of being fancy, I'm just gonna take some fine grit sandpaper. This is just a piece of thousand and we're gonna just real quick I could get crazy, you could get crazy. You could spend a bunch of time sanding this and getting it very, very, very smooth. Or using buffing wheels, buffing this as smooth as you want. But I'm just going to spend the minimum amount of time here, just a little bit of light sanding with the thousand grip, especially on these flatter surfaces. And this isn't, you don't even have to sand it. I just want to give it a nice, I don't want to change the shapes of it, I just want to get it nice really smooth to the touch. Next we're going to take, and you can wash this off and dry it, but for time period, we're just going to just get that dust off there. Keep this video semi short. Yeah, we're just going to get all that metal dust off there because we want as close to bare metal as we can for the heat coloring process because we want the outside of the metal not to be covered by any dust, not to have any oil on it, not to have any residue on it at all so that it can oxidize, that it can react with the oxygen in our air because I do believe, and comment below if you know more about this process, and you don't have to know that much about this process, but what it is, is you're using the heat and then oxidations forming on the outside of the metal that's going to form in different colors. Now, rust is a harmful type of oxidation. This is a healthy type of oxidation that will not harm the metal, and it's just going to add to the unique beauty of the metal. So let's, let's go over here. We got it really smooth, really clean. Let's go over and let's get it on the torch. Okay, we've got our bottle open over here. You can see we've got it 
pretty decently cleaned, nice and shiny. And I don't even want the residue from my fingers if I can help it. So I'm gonna wipe it off. I want as close to just bare metal as possible. So oftentimes I'll take a couple rags or paper towels or whatever and hold it, wipe it off and then touch it on there. I don't want any fingerprints on it. And now you're gonna want a surface that's non-flammable to do this on. Um, you can do it on a piece of concrete. This is just a fireplace brick. A friend of mine had a whole bunch of fireplace bricks in his wall or in his yard. So I went over, got them for free. That was the same friend who helped me make this anvil. Rest in peace, cheese fry. Now we're going, we got safety glasses on. We do have a way to put out a fire if we were to have it with the fire extinguisher. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our torch and I'm going to apply the heat. I'm gonna keep a ways back. I don't want to come right off up here, especially if I'm doing a jaw harp. I don't do my jaw harps anymore, but in, especially if I'm doing a jaw harp, I'm gonna keep my heat away and heat it up slowly and stay away from the outside because the more unevenly heated up, the more expansion and contraction happens and the more adjustment you're gonna need to do. So if you're doing a jaw harp, beware, you will have to readjust your harp when you're done and you're gonna have to be careful not to overheat it. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start up the torch. Make sure you have good ventilation. Don't do this in your bedroom. You're going to, that wouldn't be safe. Make sure you're like in a garage or outside, someplace with good ventilation. And then I'm just gonna use a propane torch. You can use map gas, whatever. Make sure not to burn you. I'm gonna try not to burn this camera or my, uh, my wonderful microphone over here. Okay, we're gonna start it up with the fire. Here we are. I'm going to stay back and you're going to see the colors are going to start to change. And it's going to take a while to heat up and first you're going to see a straw color. Okay. And we go to purple and you always stop shy of the color you want. If you see it turning into purple, stop and it will probably turn all purple. So the oxidation runs behind the temperature. The oxidation happens afterwards. So it will continue to darken as you go. The color progression will be straw yellow, purple, blue, and then cold blue or black. Same way I do the heart, go back and forth, heating it up evenly. We can see we're starting, we're just now starting to get hints of straw. Light it a little bit better. Pause for a second. Get better lighting. Okay, we can see here, we're already just starting to get that hints of straw yellow. We're gonna take it a little bit deeper. Now this will probably all turn straw yellow if I leave it, because your oxidation happens behind the, te or behind the temperature. Your temperature, you reach the temperature of the oxidation. You can see just from sitting here, it's already beginning to turn straw yellow, but we're gonna continue. We're gonna keep going, keep purple. So if I wanted to turn straw yellow, I'd heat it up just a little bit more and let it sit and it would all turn to all yellow. We're gonna take it to purple. Let's see, we're gonna get the straw. I normally do this in one, one maneuver. I just heat it up until I get the color I want. Now, let's stop for a second. Let's look at this, see what's happening. Boom, we're getting yellow with hints of purple here. This area hasn't got as hot, but you see purple developing here? Boom, and that's continuing. You can watch that. Look at that changing. It's continuing. I'm gonna make sure this doesn't slide off here in Burmese. It's continuing to turn purple because the oxidation happens more slowly. Look at that. You can watch it right before our very eyes has turned purple. I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more on this side. Heat up a little bit more right here. That 
photos will have. Oh, look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna stop here. Okay, they start, we're starting to get blue there. And that will continue. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's gonna to continue to darken. And I'm just gonna leave it here so you can just watch it change. Because that healthy oxidation is building up. That's really, really beautiful. Gotta be careful. This thing is hot, hot. I wanna make sure that that does not come off this brick. I'm just tipping it just so you can see it. And like if it's a harp, I always point them facing north. If you look, I have a mark here. I would more normally face a harp to the north. I just superstitious like that when I'm tempering things. I want to make them sure they're facing toward the north. That's not ne a necessity at all. And then I wouldn't want to be moving it around because I don't want to be disturbing the harp. Now this, I'm not worried about deformation on this. Um, we don't have to worry about that too much. But look at the beautiful colors that this is turning. Probably even. Let's grab this, the pair of smooth jaw pliers. See where we get. Oh, look at that. Look at the beautiful, beautiful colors. Now, this is quite, quite hot, so I don't want to be handling that. But look at the beautiful colors we're getting out of that. Now, I could keep going, and it would turn absolutely full black blue but I don't find that coal black blue to be as beautiful. If you stop, when you start getting hints of purple, that is the prettiest, because here we have hints of purple. There's some hints of straw here, right there, where we didn't get as hot, but there it's purple, it's blue, it's straw. This is a very beautiful thing. We're gonna let this cool. Uh, my brick didn't get very hot, but this, this bottle opener sure got hot. And we'll see how it ended up. All right, now I went ahead and I moved the bottle opener outside. It's a little bit cool, nice cool spring day just to help expedite the cooling process of it while I went and started some laundry. Um, however, if this is a jaw harp, don't move the jaw harp, don't disturb it, just give it an hour, let it cool down in its entirety. Now let's check it this out. Now here we have Heat colors and it really turned out pretty. I got hints of blue, purple, hints of straw in there. Really turned out pretty. Now I could go over this and wipe it off, heat it, heat it up again, and go completely blue. But I like leaving a little bit of variancy. It looks almost like a rainbow. So, anyways, the description down in the description if you want to get one of these hand forged bottle openers to try your hand that heat color. I'm gonna leave one in the description below. So just click that and it'll take you right there to the harper.com to get one of these. If not, just any piece of steel, just as long as it's not aluminum, um, any piece of steel or iron, I do believe you can do heat colors on. So anyways, enjoy it. If you have any questions or any requests or anything to add about the science of this, be sure to comment below. I love y'all. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Harpery. Make sure to keep your herbs clean, keep them dry, and keep them old. And above all, be good to each other. I love y'all. How about... Okay, so here it is. It's been about a week. I let it sit for a week because it will darken a little bit, but here is our finished product and it turned out just beautiful. Now I could have went a little bit darker with this, but I left a little bit of straw gold that's transitioning to purple here before we go to blue and it really has, gave it like a rainbow effect near the top. So yeah, use your heat. Just keep in mind as you get it warmer, it's going to go darker purple and eventually blue and coal black, but use your heat and stop shy of what you think you need and the colors will develop afterward. And this is a really awesome way to take plain looking steel and using nothing more than a little bit of elbow grease and some heat and turn it into something really pretty.